Hello. Hello. Alright, cool. Nope. I gotta mute that microphone.
See there? That's what I'm talking about. Thank you, dude. <laughs> I'm still new to the live stream thing, so um, some of this stuff is going to be rough, man. I, I'm trying to get used to this stuff. Anyway, let me redo the intro. My name is Jim Ansel. This is Real Deal Outdoors TV. Uh, tonight, what we're going to be doing is kind of unveiling a product. It, uh, it's just coming out to market this week. Uh, it's by 10,000 Fish, and it's called the Cycle Bait. And I think you guys are really going to dig this thing. It's pretty cool. But um, before we get started, I want to thank Mystery Tackle Box. Well, well or actually, I want to thank Catchco. Catchco are the ones that uh, are sponsoring this video. They sent me this lure to check it out, and uh, I, I'm going to do the best that I can to, to represent this lure really well for you guys tonight. Um, it looks like something really cool. It's a unique take on the spinnerbait, and uh, it's it's definitely something different that I haven't really seen before. So I got some B-roll queued up for you guys here tonight and uh, uh hopefully that is all gonna work um again i'm new to this thing so uh first thing i want to do for you guys is i'm gonna roll a uh a, a promotional video that catchco sent to me and it's gonna give you guys kind of an idea what the action of this lure is gonna look like uh it looks really great in the water you know how you you got your traditional spinner bait and it, it kind of runs true in the water it runs straight well, this thing, because of the way that it's designed, actually runs like a bait fish. So it'll it'll get a swimming action going on. It swims back and forth. So I want to show you guys that right now. Let me see if I can cue that up real quick. And here we go. All right, all right. So there you guys go. Hopefully you got to see that. Uh, I'm not sure if it came through real well or or not. I don't know how the sound was either. But uh, um, this new software that I got is really weird. I can't really monitor myself. You have to pay for premium to monitor yourself, which I think is stupid. But um, hopefully you guys saw that. The action looks really good on this lure. It's something that's completely different from any spinner bait that I've ever seen before. Um, I think that it's going to work really really well uh it, it definitely is going to add a, a, a whole nother level of realism to your spinner bait fishing and they say that the best thing to pair this guy up with is with like the yodo worm and i got some of these over here uh this is the new yodo worm right here it's got a really 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 long tapered tail and this thing just dances around like absolute crazy um it's it's something different as well uh, there are a couple of lures out there kind of like this but this thing just the action of this is just incredible and it's supposed to work really well with this guy i haven't had a chance to try these out yet because the uh the fishing around here has just been really stale uh, as you guys know it is um it's the middle of winter and it's been a warm winter but the the water is cold enough that the bass have kind of shut down so there's not a whole lot going on out there um now i'm going to take you guys through a couple of the specs on this thing and uh hold on here we go i'm going to take you guys through a couple of the specs on this thing just uh just some of the stuff that they sent me that they wanted me to touch on uh so it's it's the cycle bait it's from 10,000 fish if you guys don't know about 10,000 fish they're uh they're a subsidiary or they're they're under the catchco brand so they make a lot of different stuff mainly soft plastics right now but they're starting to get into uh into the hard baits so uh you've got let's see it has a really cool swimming pattern, kind of like a bait fish. Uh, it's great to pair up with the Yodo worm. Uh, so you, it comes in two different configurations. You can get one with a willow leaf blade, and this willow leaf blade spins. You can also get one with a Colorado blade. Uh, I haven't seen the Colorado blade. The willow leaf is the one that they sent to me. Um, and let's see what else we've got here. It's got a fixed head, and it's got the Colorado blade, or it's got a free swinging willow blade which we just talked about uh it's got mustad hooks so the the, the hooks are going to be high quality for you guys uh it's a hand tied skirt always love my hand tied skirts uh it's also available in two different sizes you've got a half ounce size and you've got a three eighths ounce size and i think the one they sent me is the half ounce size um 
And then you've got several different color options here. The MSRP of it is gonna be $6.99, but if you guys are Carl's Club members, you're gonna be able to get it for $4.89, which is a really good deal, I think. This is a super unique lure, so uh, that's a pretty good price, I think, for that lure. Um, those are the main specs that they wanted me to cover. Uh, so I'm gonna run some B-roll for you guys now. And again, hopefully this will work because uh, I haven't tested it really yet. All right, so what you're seeing here is just an you know establishing shot overview. Um, it's it's a good looking lure, guys. Here's that uh, the mechanism that really creates that crazy swimming action with this thing. And let me run another piece for you guys here. All right, now what you're looking at is the body out of the packaging. Um, I mean, pretty standard looking. It's it's got a fire tiger pattern on it. Here again is a close up look of uh, of that blade and that uh, those rings. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> All right, here's another close up look. This is the mechanism that that creates that swimming action that we were talking about. Uh, it, it's it's really unique. It's something different, man. And then lastly, I've got a montage here of your, your blade. And then uh, what we've got here is the hook. That's that must add hook. It's got a good bait keeper on there. You can see it's got the hand tied skirt on there. And then uh, something else that I really like that they do on the Guggen lures is uh, they print that, that weight on the bottom. So there's no guesswork there. You can, uh, you can look at it right in the box. You can see the weight on the, on the belly of it. And you know exactly what you're getting. So, um, all in all guys, it's a really cool looking lure. Um, again, I haven't had a chance to try it out yet. If you got to see that, uh, that B roll up at the beginning, uh, you got to see what the action looks like and it. I think it looks killer. Um, it's got that hunting action. It's got that hunting action to it. And I think it's going to, it's going to work really well. So, uh, so we, you know, kind of covered the bait a little bit here. Um, at the end of these videos, what I like to do is I'm pretty much going to just open it up for you guys to, uh, to ask some questions. If you've got any questions at all, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, we can sit here and we can talk for a few minutes, whatever. Um, I like these live streams to be, you know, laid back and uh, kind of like a conversation between me and you guys. This is, this is the idea of doing the live streams is building a community. So. Uh, you guys hit me up with any questions that you got and I'll I'll look through here and see what we have uh, Yeah, it's a really simple design dude. I think uh, It's definitely different though. I've, I've never seen anything quite like that before uh, I don't know how it's I don't know how well it's gonna work. Like I said, I haven't had a chance to try it yet um, But it, it looks really solid. I liked what I saw in the uh, in the footage that they sent to me uh, Let's see what else we got here Oh, dude, the baby's good, man. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, for those of you guys that don't know, we had a baby this summer um, back in June. He's growing too fast, man. He's growing too fast. But he's a really good baby. Uh, sleeps through the night. Doesn't really cry. He's awesome. 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 All right. Let's see. I'm going to run up the, uh, the list here, see if anybody left any questions during the cast. Yeah, I think it is a pretty good idea, um, um, Bradley. Yeah, I think it is a good idea. I, I, I like what they did here. Um, the two rings, I've, that's something I wouldn't have thought about, but uh, it definitely creates a really cool action. So uh, I can't wait to get it out and give it a try. Oh, congrats, dude. Two months. Yeah, mine's, uh, mine's getting close to six, dude. He's already almost a half a year old. It's crazy. Um, and he's doing new things all the time. So, <laughs> Hang, yo, I'll give you a shout out, Hang. What's up? <laughs> all right. Going fishing tomorrow, shallow grassy pond in North Carolina. What's your suggestion on baits? Um, you know, it depends. I don't know how cold it is where you're at. Up here, it's not super cold. The water is just cold enough that the bass have kind of have kind of shut down a little bit. Usually, what I like to throw when the bass shut down is either a jig. Jigs work pretty well for me around here. 
Uh, I'll also throw jerk baits. Jerk baits tend to work really well when it's a little colder. Uh, if it's going to be real grassy though, you might not be able to get away with a jerk bait. Um, my go-to if, if I'm going to be going in, in a real grassy spot, especially a pond, is I'll probably use like a, uh, uh, definitely a finesse bait, Ned rig of some kind. Uh, I really like the, let me see, I'll show you what I like to use right here. I really like to use the Sakoshi bug. Uh, it works really well for me. Hold on. Let me uh, swap it up here. Yeah, this guy right here. This thing is money, dude. Um, I've caught more fish probably on this lure in the last year than I've caught on anything else. And um, I'll tell you something else that I like to use too when I'm Ned rigging is there's a Ned rig head out there made by owner and it's called a blockhead. And it's got kind of a, a an offset bend in the hook so that you can rig your Ned rigs weedless. And it works really well. Actually, hang on a second. Let me see if I can pull one out of here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, let's see. Carl sent me a whole bunch of these uh, for a video that we did. And I liked them so much that I bought a whole bunch more. All right, let me switch the angle here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, that right there is the blockhead. So when you rig up your plastic on there, it's gonna be completely weedless. You, you rig it just like a Texas rig. So you, you essentially text pose the bait onto your Ned rig and it works really, really well. So uh, if I was you, if, if you can get your hands on some, I would try that out. And that should work for you. That should catch you some fish. Um, let's see what we got going on here. Uh, Reed swimmer or saucy swimmer Guggen baits. Um, I've got. I've. It's okay. So this is a question from Hang here. It says, should I get the uh, the Rage swimmer or the saucy swimmer from Guggen baits? Um, actually, both of them are really good. Uh, I've been uh, I've been working with Catchco, so I've been getting a lot more of the Catchco uh, baits and Guggen Squad. Well, I don't think the soft plastics fall under Catchco. I'm not real sure, but I've been getting a lot of the Guggen baits, and um, yeah, their Saucy Swimmer works really well. Um, but you can't go wrong with a Rage with a Rage either. So it's really up to you. They both work pretty pretty equally as well. Um, you still don't have solid ice in Michigan. That's pretty bad, dude. Yeah, it's been warm here. There's there hasn't really been a winter so far. Uh, we're in mid December and and I got a tree out in the yard that just bloomed. <laughs> if that tells you anything, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, I should be duck hunting right now and and there's no ducks down here. They haven't hasn't gotten cold enough up north to push them down. So uh, it's been pretty bad. Let's see. Life's born in Canada squishy fishy is it still uh was it locked up in canada ice everything iced up i'm sure it's cold up in canada it's it's just not cold down here uh let's see a four inch crawl yeah you might be able to get away with a four inch crawl um are you talking about like texas rigging it or putting it on a uh, a jig or what i would i would probably put it on a jig um but you'd probably catch with a four inch crawl right now. Uh, it's like I said, it's not super cold out there. So you may be able to get away with using a lot of the lures that you would use any other time of year. I, I don't know. Um, the water here is cold enough that they've, you know, they've gone into their winter um, habits. So let's see. You tend to go smaller. Let's see what we got here. Okay, Hang, you're asking, uh, what do I like better, a jerk bait or a crank bait? Uh, it really just depends on the time of year, man. If it's uh, if it's winter like this, I prefer a jerk bait. Uh, any other time of year, I prefer a crank bait. And honestly, it's difficult for me to use a crank bait around here 
um, a, a whole lot because of the grass. We've the grass situation here is it's just thick pretty much everywhere. So I tend to use a lot of soft plastics and stuff like that. I don't use a whole lot of hard hard lures here. Um, but when I do get somewhere where I've got a pocket that's open enough that I can get away with it, I'll use a crankbait. Um, the water around here is not real uh, deep, so I use a lot of shallow diving crankbaits, a lot of uh, square bills and stuff like that. So I really like the new uh, crankbaits that have come out from 13 Fishing. If you check those out, those look killer and they work really well. I really like the rattle. They're super loud. Um, really nice cranks and they, they, they look fantastic. The paint jobs are, are incredible on those things. Oh, dude's helping me out. Yes, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button. I appreciate it, man. Um, so anyway, guys, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to do this uh, probably once a week. If if not once a week, maybe once every couple of weeks. Uh, I'm talking about getting my cousin to come over here and help me out. Uh, he's maybe going to run this computer so that I don't have to keep looking over here at the computer screen and, and uh, hitting all the buttons and doing all that. So he's going to kind of maybe run the show for me. Um, something else that I've been kicking around is maybe doing some, uh, some interviews, maybe getting some pros to come on here and talk, maybe, uh, maybe some other YouTubers to come on here and talk. Um, and something a lot of you guys probably don't know about me is I, I worked in the music industry for a lot of years. Uh, I worked with a lot of, uh, big name rock bands and stuff like that. So I'm hoping maybe I can get some of those guys to come on here and talk as well. Um, some stuff that maybe you guys aren't so into but uh, a lot of those guys I know fish and some of them really love to fish especially bass fish uh, a handful of them do so I'm gonna try and get those guys to come on here and do kind of a, a split thing where we will talk a little bit about their music we'll talk a little bit about uh, about their fishing and um, and then hopefully you know it'll be something cool that we'll be able to open the floor up and you guys can ask them some questions so that could potentially be an idea that we uh, that we do down the road. Just depends on how receptive people are to the idea. Um, but anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Let me see if there's any more questions here, and then I think I'll go ahead and I'll wrap this bad boy up. Oh, okay, the whopper plopper. Yeah, whopper ploppers are great, man. Um, I, it wouldn't be like the only lure that I would ever use because as most of you guys, I know all you guys know, top water, top water is really only popping, um, a portion of the year. You can get away with using top water pretty much during, you know, all summertime, springtime, fall time, but it's really popping in, uh, in the spring and the fall. You know, when it gets really hot, those bass like to go down a little deeper to, to hit that cooler water. Um, yeah, whopper ploppers are awesome. It's that's one of my favorites. Um, it's got a great action. Catch a lot of fish with those things. Uh, just top water in general for me. I, I really love regular poppers. That's always been one of my favorite one of my favorite lures. Um, and again, Thirteen Fishing just came out with one this year that I'm really digging called the Poppy McPop Face. <laughs> those things are pretty sweet. Um, definitely check those out if you get the chance to. All right, let's see what else we got here. Oh, dude, that's crazy, Hang. I actually used to play the clarinet when I was in uh, in high school. Where I was, I was in junior high school, and um, I played in the the junior high band, and then I played for one year in the marching band in high school, and I played clarinet. So um, that's kind of sort of what got me started. I don't play any instruments like that anymore. Now I play bass, drums, guitar. I sing. I do a lot of that kind of stuff. I was in bands myself for years, so. Um, rock bands and metal bands and stuff like that mainly but um <clears throat> all right let's see what else we got going on here cool deal cool de yeah man it was it's it's definitely a chill vibe in here um the only thing I don't like is just the dead air time, you know, when I'm, I'm reading comments and stuff like that and, uh, stopping and, and having to do that. There's, there's dead air space. People get kind of tired of that. 
and I hate that I say um all the time at least when I do my regular videos I can go back and edit all that out but I'm hoping if I get somebody in here to help me you know they can go through the comment section and write down the ones that uh, you know they think would be great for me to answer and then I can just you know pick them up off a sheet or something like that uh, it, it should make everything run a little bit smoother uh, pretty much all my success from July to September yeah man July and September well down here it gets super hot I'm sure in Canada it doesn't get you know it probably doesn't break 100 degrees in Canada on a regular basis I don't know for sure because I haven't really been up there before um, but I know it's a little cooler up that way down here in the summertime and I'm, I'm only midway uh, in the United States I live in North Carolina so that's that's like the the midway point um, it gets really hot dude it can get up to like 110 degrees sometimes with the heat index during the summer and uh, it's you know top water just it doesn't it doesn't work um, you may be able to go out and catch a few on top water late, late, late in the evening, like twilight time and maybe super early in the morning. Um, but I really don't have this, this is a weird fishery where I'm at because it's, uh, it's brackish. So it's salt water and fresh water. Uh, there's a lot of salt water mixed in. It's enough salt water that salt water species live in here. So you might go out bass fishing and catch uh, speckled trout or flounder or redfish or, or striper. There's all kinds of stuff in here. And, um, it just it gets really hot and top water just locks up it doesn't really work real well so uh, went out in the kayak 7 a.m. and lost a 10 pounder three casts and lost my plopper oh man lost your plop yeah, I hate it when that happens dude I've lost some expensive lures um, I lose lures like it ain't nobody's business man <laughs> especially around here there's a lot of cover man a lot of vegetation a lot of submerged uh, structure and stuff out here uh, in the bay mainly because there's there's a lot of duck blinds out here and a lot of times these guys when they're duck blinds or, or when it ices up in the bay and the ice starts to move it'll cut those duck blinds down and they'll sink and you've got just tons of submerged structure out there all kinds of uh, it's like a, a duck blind graveyard there's all kinds of wood and stuff out there to get hung up on get snagged on um, so it's it's uh, it's challenging. It's challenging to use hard lures, uh, anything with a treble hook. There's a couple of deeper holes though, um, and I like to use rattle traps. That's that's mainly what I catch my striper on out here. Yeah, bass with saltwater fish, man. It's a mixed bag. You never know what you're gonna get. Um, I mean, we've we've even uh, what was it, a couple of years ago. You know that O search where they they track the sharks. They put the uh, tracking tags on them and they see where they go. We had a, a tiger shark swim up in here a couple of years ago, which that's that's kind of scary because I've you know swam in this water my entire life. Um, let's see, two jig, three spinner baits are the best for me in winter. Yeah, Ned rig, Ned rig works really well all the time. Um, for me, that's, that's my go-to pretty much year round. I hate to say that on here cause everybody, there's so many guys that are like, Oh, I use the Ned rig all the time. It's like cheating. Hey man, whatever catches the fish. Um, and jigs, I use jigs quite a bit. Uh, trash master jig, especially from, uh, from, uh, who makes that trash master jig? It's, uh, it's made by Catchco, but who is it? It's, um, game changer, game changer. I've got a ton of those things. Game Changer Lures makes that. Um, and it's totally weedless. I love that thing. It works really well around here for that thick slop. Uh, and spinner baits. Spinner baits, I honestly don't have a whole lot of uh, success with spinner baits. So, uh, yeah, it was a tiger, not a bull shark, surprisingly. I, I, I know we could have bull sharks in here. We've always known that. And, uh, but yeah, surprisingly, it was a tiger shark. So the salinity is high enough that uh pretty much any shark could swim in here if it wanted to through Oregon inlet um and i think what was it three or four years ago great white actually swam in through Oregon inlet and, and got up in the uh in the sound out there uh multi-species lure yeah yeah it is you can catch pretty much anything with that um as far as freshwater species go around here where the spinner bait's concerned uh, we don't have a whole lot other than largemouth that would eat it. Um, out here in my fishery, we don't have smallies. 
Uh, every now and then you'll catch a pickerel, which is is like a, a pike. Um, but they're few and far between. I don't catch them very often. Other than that, it's just a, a grinnel or a, a bowfin. Uh, we got a lot of those out here. They'll tear your stuff up. I always hate catching a bowfin on a nice new lure. They chew it all up and tear it to pieces. Um, my favorite lure. Okay. Um, that's hard, man. I've got so much tackle in here. It's really hard. Uh, honestly, right now, my favorite lure is that uh, is that Sakoshi bug that I showed you guys. Um, let me see here. Yeah, right now this is my favorite lure paired up with, uh, with this right here, the blockhead. That's, that's my favorite combination right now because I catch so many fish with it. Um, but if you're talking about like my favorite hard lure, I, it, it's hard for me to say because I don't use them so much. Um. If, uh, if I had to choose, I would say a topwater popper, and, and it does matter which ones because some of them work a little bit differently. Some of the new poppers that they've been coming out with over the last couple of years, I hate them because they don't really chug. I like a, I like a popper that, that'll really chug. Um, these new poppers that they're coming out with, they don't really chug. They more walk the dog. Some of you guys might know what I'm talking about. The mouth is designed a little bit differently. And you can't really uh, you can't really get a, a good chug out of it. Um, those new Poppy McPop faces that came out from 13 Fishing this year, those are awesome. They give you a really nasty chug. Um, but most of the most of the new poppers that they've been coming out with, I just don't I just don't really care for them because they do that walk the dog. And I know that there's benefits to that. Like if you're good at walking the dog, that lure is gonna stay. Uh, in, in one place a little bit longer because you can work it that way to where it, it doesn't it doesn't you know take off or anything like that uh, I just don't like it I just don't like it it's harder for me to work it um, it's it's you know, I, I feel a lot of times like all I'm doing is making a bunch of noise and scaring the fish so um, I would rather just use one of those chuggers um, a spook yeah a spook works pretty good man I I don't use walk the dog style lures so much um, mainly because there's so much grass around here. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of really thick vegetation, uh, especially in the, the bay out here. Um, there's, there's not a lot of, um, I don't fish a lot of your traditional type of, of pond settings and, and lake settings and stuff like that. It's, it's definitely a different world here. And to answer your question before, well, it wasn't really a question, but, uh, you, oh, how do, how do bass survive in such salt, salt intense waters? I really don't know. Um, I don't know what their tolerance is for, for salt. Um, I don't know what the salinity is here. I don't know how salty it's got to be for a shark to be able to survive in waters like this. But we catch uh, skates and rays out here all the time, and, and they're closely related to sharks. So um, it's pretty weird, man. It's, it's crazy. Again, and, and the salinity out here changes all the time if we get a good hard rain that'll drop the salinity level you know if it doesn't rain for a while we get a good uh, uh, wind to come in here and blow the water out because it's wind blown tides and then the water comes back in the salinity level will rise so it's 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 weird out here man and none of the uh, you know how like when you you fish in lakes and ponds and stuff like that the bass tend to spawn at a certain time of the year you can you can pretty much track them like clockwork where they're going to be and what they're going to be doing that's not so that's not so true out here it's a little more difficult to pinpoint what they're doing um you got to go out there and kind of kind of uh play around a little while until you find the patterns torpedoes yeah i've got some torpedoes um the torpedoes that i got are old torpedoes uh i've I, I haven't bought a torpedo for myself in a long time. I got some of my grandpa's old uh, tiny torpedoes. That and I've got you. Well, you can't really see them on the wall back here. I've got some uh, uh, torpedoes and some uh, devil horses, old school wooden lure. It's antique that are kind of like torpedoes. Um, the the old timers said them things. They were dynamite back in the day. Uh, I have another question. What's your favorite crappie lure? Um. That's a good question, man. I don't really know. I, for crappie, I typically just use a uh, a grub 
on a jig head and I'll dangle that on uh, you know a little bit below a bobber that's how I fish for crappie around here as I, I use a float and uh, whatever the level is that those crappie are hanging out at I'll uh, that's where I'll set that bobber and uh, I'll just jig that thing around I'm not a real big crappie fisherman um, people hate that about me <laughs> I'm pretty close-minded um, I'm, I'm all about the bass man I'm all about the bass uh, I got a buddy of mine who likes to go crappie fishing and cat fishing and he does all kinds of stuff man and, and he's always inviting me to go out and I'm like nah man I, I think I'm gonna go catch some bass and uh, and he gets mad at me thinks I don't like him I just I just I just like bass fishing <laughs> Yeah, spooks are awesome, man. I just I just don't get to use them as much out here. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm not real good at walking the dog. Um, I can do it, but I, I prefer not to. <laughs> I prefer to use a, a technique that I'm that I'm good at, that I'm more confident with. So uh, that's pretty much why I do what I do. Um, but anyway, guys, I, I appreciate y'all hanging around, asking questions, and hanging out with me for a while. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna shut this bad boy down. Um, I appreciate y'all. I seriously, seriously appreciate y'all being here. Um, if, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Let me know you enjoy what's going on here. And uh, if, if I don't see you before Christmas time, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you guys and tight lines until next time. <laughs>